Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Helix in the Studio. And today I want to talk about what the title of this video is. Creating a really killer track or production in the studio using just one preset. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is I get people asking me lots of questions about how I work in the studio with the Helix. And you know, in the past when I'm working on an album or a session, sometimes if I'm layering guitar parts, I will find numerous presets or, you know, I, I oftentimes use all of my marketplace presets. I've got those to a point where I love the way they sound and it makes it so easy. I have this library of presets I just choose from when I'm doing session work or my own album. So I'll grab, you know, maybe a Fender flavor and Marshall flavor and blend them all together. But how about keeping it really simple? Let's make a killer track with one preset. Now, what got me thinking about this is when I'm making my Line 6 marketplace presets, um, I'm creating a demo for them so people can hear how they sit in a mix, how they work in a real world situation. So my hands are tied. I, I have to create a preset that's going to work in the mix with no other processing after the fact and not allowed to EQ or compress or anything. I can obviously change the volumes and, and pan the, the guitars in a mix, but that's about it. So, uh, and I have to basically be stuck to this one preset. So I thought, I'm going to do something interesting. There's a song I wrote back in the early 2000s. It was the first track on my first solo album, which I released, I believe, back in 2005. I was never totally happy with the way the track turned out. Not so much the guitar part or the, the, the composing, but just how some of the other parts, the rhythm section came together. So I got to put out a huge thank you to my really good friends, Marco Miniman and Jason Henry, who both played on this track. I redid the track, re-recorded everything on it, and used it as a demo for a new Marketplace preset I have coming out based around the Roland Jazz Chorus model we have in the Helix. So you're gonna hear some of this. They knocked it out of the park, and a huge hats off to them. Uh, I'm very honored to call them friends and have the opportunity to work with such fine musicians, really wonderful humans, and amazing musicians as as you'll hear in the track so i wanted to re rework this track and i did and i'm super happy with the way it came out it's going to be available for download on my website i'll put a link below if anybody wants to grab the track it'll be up on my website it'll also be available in the near future on spotify and itunes and all those other fine streaming services and download services. So enough of that. I wanted to use this to basically showcase this new Line 6 Marketplace preset I have coming out. And it'll be coming out in just a few days, I believe. I'm just waiting to hear back from when that'll actually be listed. So it should be up there really soon. But it was a really good example of how to layer guitar tracks and still have them work in a mix when I can't actually touch the preset other than what's in that preset. So this is kind of a stomp box style preset. It's one clean amp with a couple overdrive pedals, some effects like chorus, phaser, a couple reverbs, a delay. So I had to just come up with my kind of sonic landscapes to kind of blend and fit in to this track using nothing but what is in this preset. And I want to show you guys how I do this in the studio and hopefully it'll spark some ideas for you when you're working on your production. So without further ado, let's go over to Cubase. Now here's my project file here. And you'll notice I have rhythm guitars one through eight and lead guitars one through eight. Now some folks might say, whoa, there's 16 guitar tracks. The thing to remember is seldom are they ever playing all at the same time. What you'll see here in the beginning of the song is there's two rhythm guitar parts which are panned and one lead. Uh, those are kind of cleanish sounds and then partially the way through that little lead solo part, I bring in a couple other separately panned guitar tracks that are more distorted tracks to blend. So really there are you know, five guitars going on at once and I think you'll find for the most part that's what you'll find in here is you'll have maybe two rhythm parts which are panned, maybe four rhythm parts which are panned in different ways but of different sonic textures and you know a lead guitar and maybe a harmony over it. So there isn't you know, ever a point where there's 16 guitars going on at the same time. So um, in the rhythm guitar parts though, when I'm creating this track, let me, let me start off by doing this. Let me give you a little example snippet of what the uh, rhythm section sounds like on this from my great friends, Marco and Jason. So that gives you an idea of what's going on on their tracks. Now, <clears throat> over top of this, one of the guitar parts I wrote was this 
very simple little textural part as the backdrop for the intro solo. When we hear that in with the drums and the bass, Now this is a stereo preset, so I used a stereo panner and I panned that over to the left side. Uh, using the stereo panner to kind of keep some of that stereo effect in there. Because what I have on this track is a chorus sound. This is actually, and here's one of the techniques I use a lot. I rolled my guitar volume back, I put it on the neck pickup and I put a chorus on it. I then panned that out to one side. Now what I did on the next track, which I panned over to the other side, you can see the panning here with the stereo panner again. Here's what this other guitar sounds like. This is a different pickup. I believe this is my bridge and middle pickup, but now with a phaser on it. So when I combine these two guitars panned out with the different texture of, you know, the overdrive, one of the overdrive pedals on, volume rolled way back so it's kind of clean with the odd little edge of breakup, one with a chorus, one with a phaser, and then pan them out, this is what we got. All right, and the other thing you'll notice on that is I do have a very subtle delay from the track as well. You kind of hear it on the tail end where you hear those repeats, but all of that works together to give a very nice lush rhythm backdrop that kind of stays out of the way of the drums and bass. The other thing I do here is I play these with my fingers. Now this is one thing, using the volume knob and using finger picking, maybe against the backdrop of, of, a, of a grindier tone with a pick, is how I will alter the sound of this preset just using my hands, right? So for the lead part that's on top of that, what you'll hear is I went with a much bigger reverb. There's not a lot of reverb on these other two tracks. So here's what the lead part sounds like. Now this is going to be played with a pick, a different overdrive sound, and on the bridge pickup. So notice I use different pickup selections all the way through to allow those tones to blend different overdrive for the lead, more reverb, much wetter with some d delay as well. There's a lot of reverb on that and I get away with it because on the drums, bass and other two rhythm parts, there isn't really a ton of reverb. I used the delay to give it kind of a spatial sound along with the phaser and the chorus and blended those together. So all of that together sounds like this. Now, right at this point, I wanna build a little more excitement. So I bring in two rhythm guitar parts that are exactly the same tone. This time though, panned left and right, but only left 50 and right 50 on these two parts. And they sound like this. This is gonna be the bridge pickup, full on volume now. I don't have the volume rolled back anymore with a pick kind of digging in and grinding a little bit more. They sound like this. You'll notice sometimes they're playing in unison and sometimes they're playing a harmony part. You can hear there's a bit of reverb on it, but much less because I have so much reverb on the main solo. So when that part comes in, we'll hear the whole track together. All right, so you see it all blends together. If you notice those two sort of grindy rhythm guitar parts in the back are kind of pulled back in the mix. They're just there to add some support. 
and give a different texture as we go along. Now for the next part, the, these two guitar parts, those, those textural parts kind of drop out for now. And these two rhythm parts continue just hitting shots with the drums. And what that was designed to do is to free up space for this really grindy, rude kind of um, lead melody apart. I was kind of listening, if I remember correctly, to a lot of Jeff Beck and Mark Knopfler and Joe Satriani back then, kind of weird combination. But this is where all the ideas from this, I think, were influenced by at least. So here's this lead part. Now this is going to be with a, a different overdrive pedal, much more grindy, uh, where I dig in more bridge pickup with a pick, full on volume, on. And the guitar I was using for all the parts so far is my Vigier Expert uh, Strat style guitar. One of my absolute favorite guitars of all time. I really love that guitar. But here is what this melody sounds like. <laughs> Now that blends in nice with those rhythm guitars because first of all, the rhythm guitars are very sparse, but it's a totally different tone. They're panned out wide and the lead guitars just pan slightly off center, left about 20. So with the rhythm guitars, it sounds like this. <laughs> So it comes together nicely. Now, one other thing that I do though, is I add a couple little harmony parts to the lead guitar and those sound like this. So all together, you'll hear them work. The one thing I do on those parts is again, I switch up a different pickup selection than the bridge pickup and you'll hear it here. It's a fatter tone there. And then if I go to the other one, that one I believe is back on the bridge pickup, but panned out. So all together in the mix, you're gonna hear those sound like this. Now I go into a completely separate section here. These, these, these uh, distorted rhythm guitar parts keep going with this little part. But what I blend in here now with that are a couple clean parts. When you hear all those together. And with the clean parts, I kind of pan those the same way I did with the original early uh, tracks we heard in the song. So it all blends together really nicely and with the rhythm section. Over top of that though, I also return to using a very kind of less overdriven lead melody. Again, big, big reverb on it. Because I don't have a huge amount of 
reverb on these other parts. Although I believe on the clean parts here, I may have added the bigger reverb because I just felt like I wanted it to be extra lush at that point. So it's about really picking and choosing where you want these huge reverbs and where you want something maybe a little bit smaller and making sure that they all work together. So after that, we kind of end up back to similar sections and parts. Revisiting the intro with a little bit of a different solo. We then kind of go through the same sections with some variations. So really just little variations in the melody and whatnot, but as far as the, the, the landscape that I laid out as far as textural approach and panning and tones, I kind of kept it the same until this middle bridge section, which does kind of get a little hectic. Here's the drums and bass to it. and into the main solo. Man, I'll tell you, Jason nailed it on that, knocked it out of the park. Uh, so the part that I originally wrote just as a rhythm guitar part was this. Now I had those in there, they kind of aren't powerful enough though for me to, to, to really portray the, the crazy powerful hectic sound I wanted in this bridge part. So together with the drums and bass, it was a little weak sounding. So what I did is I grabbed this guitar. And this is another way that I kind of use one preset in grabbing different guitars. I grabbed my Vigier GV Wood. Humbucker pickups now, and I thought I'm going to play this little part again, double it, but with the grindier guitar tone, so those sounds are right here. So when I combine those with the original tracks, They just added a little bit of weight underneath, which I, is what I wanted. Now, the thing, the reason I didn't kind of go even bigger on that and really crank those up in the mix is because down here, the main lead part to this is rather hectic and all over the place. And I wanted it to kind of cut through this. So here's what this part sounds like. Now, this is back to the Strat with the sort of higher gain overdrive pedal. And I'm trying to get this to sound really thin and grindy and even the way I attack with my pick. <laughs> And I add a really crazy harmony to this. And I was really going for that kind of dissonant, crazy, hectic sound. Now, when we hear all of that together, and again, what we have is these two parts pan, these two rhythm guitar parts panned left 50 and right 50. The heavier ones are going to be panned left and right, hard left and right. And the lead parts are just gonna be kind of right 30 and left 30. Just giving everything its sonic space plus using different tones within this one preset by using different overdrive pedals, different guitars, different pickup selection. And you know, some parts of the tune, like I said, different playing with the fingers rather than playing with the pick. And all of these things help so that this tone can all blend together in a mix without me having to do any major work. Here's what the bridge sounds like with all of that.
All right, and that leads us into the main guitar solo. You'll notice little things that I do though is I try to create little variations as I go through. I didn't bring the harmony in the whole way through. I allowed that part to kind of become the part. Then on the second time through that section to add a little bit of variation, there is some variation in the main melody, but also add that harmony part. So now onto the solo. On the main rhythm guitar track, I just kept that same tone, the Strat bridge pickup, kind of just playing through on one of the overdrive settings. But I also kept the other guitar, the GV Wood, with the heavier overdrive pedal. But I wanted to outline these chords a little more. So what I did is I went up to track one here, and I took this sound. And I purposely have the, the, the kind of digital clipping in a way from the bubble vibrato that's a part of this Helix preset combined with the lesser of the distortion pedals, the lesser uh, distorted one, and my Strat on one particular pickup selection, which I'm not even sure which one I used on that. And then I took that part, similar part, higher up. Again, pan these out kind of left and right with the stereo panner as it was on these tracks. And then when we hear those two together, So at this point, it's probably the most guitars that's going on. There's two, four, six rhythm guitars and a lead part. So all of those rhythm guitars though, using different guitars, different overdrive pedals and some different textures from the bubble vibrato and that edgy clipping you hear on the, uh, the, the tracks of the bubble vibrato actually help it to really kind of come through in the mix. Here's what those six guitars sound like together. All right, now you might say, well, what did you do over top of that? Well, I wanted a different guitar texture. So I grabbed my, another one of my favorite guitars, this Black Vigier Excalibur, which is a completely different set of pickups in this one that's going to give a completely different tone. And I put on the heavier overdrive pedal with some delay and with the smaller reverb and that lead tone sound like this for this solo. And if we hear that all in context with those six rhythm parts, it sounds like this. Now at this part here, I bring this little guitar part in to kind of carry the rhythm. The Strat, not on the bridge pickup again, with the bigger reverb, and I allow the end of the lead guitar part to just kind of do this vibrato where it's rubbing against the frets. I like rude little things like that in there sometimes and you'll hear how that kind of carries things along. But then there's one other little lead part that, that locks in with Marco's uh, really cool drum fill here. And again, I went with the bigger reverbs on those because it's a much sparser part of the track.
Now we end up going through a lot of the same sections with a lot of the same tones and layering that I talked about before with some variations in the melodies. Now one of my favorite parts on this song is when we get to the outro and Marco and Jay nailed it again on this part. Uh, love, love, love what they did. Um, but here's what the rhythm guitar parts ended up sounding like. Same kind of textural approach as I used in the intro. But this time I doubled those up with rhythm guitar five and six right here. I was really loving the phaser chorus and these just more straight cleans with a bigger reverb, some delay on a couple of them, panned out in ways that kind of blend them together and make room for the drum part and the bass part. So all of that sounds like this. Now that gave me a beautiful sonic landscape to kind of just improvise a little melodic end part here that's kind of, you know, very different than some of the grindier, more uh, rude sounds that were in this song. And this is the little lead I came up with at the end. So I was just reacting to what Jason and Marco were playing and all together that sounds like this. And that's how the tune ends. So again, on that part at the end, it's basically the Strat style gets hard with the volume rollback playing with the fingers with the appropriate kind of pickup selector, right? So that's how I approached using this one preset in the mix. So you might say, well, what's the takeaway from this? Well, some of the techniques that I am always thinking of, whether I'm doing session work, composing, doing any studio work or, or anything for that matter is, how can I use my hands? How can I use my guitars? How can I use different guitars? How can I use techniques such as panning in the studio to really get what I need maybe out of just one sound? I mean, it really is gonna depend on the song we're doing. Maybe we have a preset where we just need a death metal tone of some sort and we only have this. Well, this isn't gonna do that for you. So obviously you're gonna to have to go to different presets for that. But if you get kind of a, a versatile utility preset that does handle things from maybe, you know, not super, super high gain, but maybe slightly higher gain to mid gain, uh, to cleaner, and just even using your volume pot and some of these techniques I talked about. So some of them were panning creatively, right? So uh, using effects as textures, Phaser on one side, chorus on the other. Let those kind of swirl and blend together. Different pickup selections on the same guitar when layering guitars, especially if they aren't going to be panned away. Sometimes if you're going to pan them very dramatically left and right, you can get away with the exact same tone. It's not going to be a problem. Using our pick or our fingers instead, you could tell in this song, I could get very different tones, whether I was grabbing a pick and digging into the strings or playing very softly. Using the volume pot, rolling it off to 
clean the sound up and retain as much of that edge of breakup as we want just with, you know, a, a roll of the pinky, right, to get it sounding that way. So those are some of the techniques that I wanted to throw out there and sort of show you a real world example, let you hear my new song that's gonna be coming out on Spotify and iTunes really soon. Uh, it's also, like I said, available on my website right now to go download if you wanted to go grab a copy of this song, as well as let you hear what one of my upcoming marketplace presets, which is going to be out, I, I, it could be tomorrow, it could be the next few days, I'm not really sure, but it will be soon. And Watch out for the playthrough video of this song uh, as the demo for that marketplace preset. And I want to let you hear what that sounds like, completely unprocessed in the mix. This is all just using compression, effects, reverb delays, everything right from the preset, set up kind of in a pedal board style. So you can grab this preset with the similar guitars and hear what these tones sound like. So you get to hear them outside of the mix as well as inside the mix. So anyways, I hope that was at least interesting and helpful to some of you folks that are doing studio work and that are making your own productions. Maybe you got a few cool ideas out of that, or maybe you hated everything I did here and that's fine too. We all have very different tastes as far as what we like, as far as tones and, and how we work. And by no means am I suggesting that, you you know, this is some sort of gospel or the only way to work. Obviously it is not. A lot of folks probably work very differently and get stellar results. And that's the beauty of this art form we call uh, music making, right? We all can come up with great results with different roads to get there, I guess. But hopefully that sparks some cool ideas for some of you and I hope you enjoyed it. So look out for the uh, playthrough video of this in my Line 6 Marketplace preset. Go grab a copy of the song. The song's called Orbit. Uh, features my, my good friends Marco Miniman on drums, Jason Henry on the fretless bass. They both knocked it out of the park and I can't say thank you to them enough for really bringing this song to a whole new level. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get use out of it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content. Out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thanks for tuning in again. Ciao for now.